Good evening. Thank you all for coming and welcome. This is the 2022 Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce City Council Forum. So thank you all again for being here both live on TV and here in our studio audience. Uh, my name is Mark Cove. I'm a longtime resident of the City of Oakdale. I am a Chief Development Officer for First Resource Bank and also 25 plus year member and director of the Oakdale Area Chamber. I will be one of your two moderators. Sitting next to my left here is Larry Eberhard. Larry is my co-moderator tonight. Uh, Larry is a lifetime Oakdale resident, graduate of Tartan High School, and leader of Eberhard Group, where he successfully closed over 1,800 real estate sales, more than 500 here in the city of Oakdale. So extremely dedicated. So glad to have Larry as my partner here tonight. Um, logistics sake, we want, don't want to waste time with introductions. We want to get right to the meat. Uh, we have three of our council candidates, uh, one of the candidates, uh, was not able to make it here this evening, so we do have three. Uh, we picked an order uh, for these candidates to speak uh, and to uh, answer questions, and that random order is to my left, Colleen Swedberg. Uh, next to Colleen is Susan Olson, and then Andy Morecambe at the end. And so we will start uh, real briefly with some uh, opening uh, comments and remarks, and with that first, we'll kick it off to Colleen. Thanks, Mark. Um, good evening, everyone. My name, as Mark said, my name is Colleen Swedberg. Glad to see some people out in the audience, and I hope some more are online watching. I have had the honor of serving as a city council member these last four years. Prior to that, I served on the Park and Rec Commission for over five plus years because of my first passion about the parks in Oakdale. In fact, I got engaged at the Nature Preserve, and we had our wedding and reception at the at the Discovery Center. It was so much fun, but I'm not biased at all. Oakdale is a great place to live. I was born and raised in Washington County, so I know and understand the area quite well. I attended college at Winona State University for an elementary and special ed degree. I've been totally vested in Oakdale for over 10 plus years, being involved in as many community events as I can, such as con the concerts in the park, Summerfest, outdoor and indoor market, national night out, attending educational programs at the Discovery Center. These events are a great way for me to connect with various residents to hear their op opinion on things. In addition, I am on the age-friendly committee for Oakdale, which is a subgroup of the Oakdale Wellness 50 plus organization. This year I was voted by council to be the acting mayor. This means I fill in as mayor when he is unable to attend an event. I have done this several times throughout the year, including various ribbon cuttings and luncheon meetings. In fact, this Thursday, I will be filling in for him at the OACC, Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce uh, luncheon meeting, giving the Oakdale update. With all the involvement, commitment, and experience I have, I will continue to represent the residents well as a city council member. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Next, Susan. Awesome. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. And thank you, Mark and Larry, both for hosting this and the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm a little nervous. I'm not a politician, and I don't play one on TV, so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> Um, I'm running for my second term for the city council. Um, so part of my experience is in the private sector where I work right now for a financial services company for the last 11 years. Prior to that, I was an accountant and an office manager for several small businesses, one in North St. Paul and then one also here in Oakdale. So small business is definitely my passion. Um, and I would like to do everything I can to help all the small businesses in Oakdale. I've also served as the liaison on the EMC, the EDC, and also as acting mayor last year. Um, I've also been here since 1977. In and out, my family's been here since 1977. I've moved, come back, moved, come back, but here permanently since 2016 again. I am a graduate of Tartan Senior High. Both of my sisters are also graduates, and my niece is now attending Tartan, and apparently she loves it. <laughs> Great to hear. Um, 
And I think that's good for now. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Last but not least, Andy, Mr. Markham. Yes, thank you very much. My name is Andy Markham, and I'm a candidate here for city council. I am not currently on the council, but I am a new face that's been in Oakdale for a very long time. So my background, I can tell you a little bit about, is uh, my wife and I and our three kids moved to Oakdale just over 10 years ago. And before that, we spent a little over eight years in East St. Paul. So we've been vol involved in the Eastern Metro for almost two decades. So the reason why I'm here and why I'm running for city council is because from a young age, I've been very involved with service and leadership. My father was a veteran, and as a youth, I was in the scouting program for 10 years and became an, an Eagle Scout through that process. <clears throat> in high school, I was the president of my student government with a class of 650 people. And from there, I took it forward to when I went to college. So I went to UMD in Duluth and worked towards my teaching degree at the time. And there I was the head of the SERVE organization. So SERVE stands for Students Engaged and Rewarding Volunteer Experiences. So I helped every week with students go out to the homeless shelters and to feed people in town. All of that to say that a lot of what I do is based on community. I believe that you serve in the place you live and you care about. So my wife and I, when we were in East St. Paul, we had three kids, we ran out of room, and we had some serious choices to make. Where are we gonna live? We had to make a decision. We looked at Stillwater, Oakdale, Lake Elmo, even Hudson. But we ended up coming to Oakdale because we found the people here have deep, deep roots. Just like Larry, like Mark, like Susan, everybody here is very connected to this community. And they stay here because of the community feel, because of the way that they support each other, and because of how they care for everybody around them. So since we've come to Washington County, my wife and I have served in other ways. We've been foster parents for over six years for Washington County. I'm a scout master currently for the troop in Oakdale here and have been for a number of years. <clears throat> and I'm currently a board member for a local nonprofit that supports vulnerable families and children. So Oakdale is very important to me and that's my passion. But beyond passion, the reason why I'm running is because I also have experience and education to back it up. So I recently graduated with my master's in public and nonprofit administration. And one of my professors even was a former administrator from the city of Oakdale. So a number of the projects that I worked on showed the history of our town. I'm very familiar. In addition to that, I've spent over 15 years as a business leader, working for Fidelity and then a small business here in town. I've managed budgets and teams across the Midwest, millions of dollars of organizational funding. And all of that goes towards supporting city government, understanding how financing works, understanding the role that we play as a council member, and making sure that we're involved. So for all of that, my vision here uh, was really summed up last night when I was out trick-or-treating with my family. We went down the street, and we saw hundreds of people down Anna's Grove, where I live. And they were in their driveways, they were having fires, they were all talking with each other. And what struck me is that those neighborhoods don't happen by accident. It takes planning, it takes dedication, it takes a lot of involvement for people that live here. So that's what I wanna see continue, it's what I wanna support, and I'm just happy to be uh, here to run for city council. Thank you, and uh, <clears throat> having done this for 20 some years, uh, all the candidates kept within their time. <laughs> it's going to point that out. Yes. You gave them all four minutes for an intro statement and all did. And thank you. It's rare. I know that's hard to believe. Uh, just real quick, logistically, uh, uh, Mr. Eberhard and I are going to switch off on questions. We have a handful of questions that were put together by uh, various members of the Oakdale Area Chamber Board of Directors. So we'll start with those questions, and then we're fielding some questions from both our audience here in person, as well as on the television, and that number, 941 500 uh, three, two, seven, five, uh, it goes right, right to me here in this nice little box. Uh, so we appreciate that. So what we're going to plan to do is some questions may be asked of individuals. Some might be asked of the group. More than likely the start is all going to be the group. Uh, and we're going to start with the same order from my left to right. So if it's a group question, we'll start with Colleen. And then the next question, we'll start with Susan. And then the next question, we'll start with Andy and rinse, lather, repeat type of thing. And so uh, try to keep the answers to the questions one to two minutes because if there is a question asked to somebody individually, everybody else has a chance to respond as well. So, uh, And then the only other thing worth noting is if questions come in and they're derogatory of nature or something uh, that 
Mr. Eberhard and I feel should not be asked. We're going to be editing or not even asking the questions. So uh, we've done this for uh, quite some time, and it's here to be a forum, not here to be a, you know, pointing fingers at anyone specifically. So a chance to get to know you. So with that, I'm going to start with the first question. Uh, again, Larry, Mr. Eberhard here will have the second. And the first question, and I'm going to start with Colleen again and go down, is what attributes make you best suited for the task of being an Oakdale City Council member? Well, my past experience of um, already being, being on the city council, um, my leadership in my manufacturing environment, I've been d the director and in charge of staff of over 50 people. Um, uh, I was on the Park and Rec uh, Commission, and uh, I, I guess just my personality and um, my sincerity of wanting to do right for the city. That's the main thing. I have a passion for Oakdale. Great. Thank you. Ms. Olson. Um, so I've been on the council for four years. I l have learned so much, so much that I never knew existed. And I think taking that into the future is definitely a positive thing, and it will help the city to kind of stay stable and move forward in all of their new development and new projects we're working on. Also, um, my career is working in finance, whether it be office management, accounting, or currently in my um, financial administration position. Um, I do have a sincere passion for Oakdale, sometimes too much. Um, I care very much, and, and the whole reason I'm here is based on a meeting that happened in 2018 where I felt like the state officials weren't providing us with accurate, honest information during a, a meeting about our water, which is critically important to everyone that lives here. And um, to be quite honest, I was so frustrated and angry that the next day I came in and, and put my name on the ballot to be city council member. I'm here now, never thought it would happen, but I'm here, learning, working through it, and because I've been here for so long, I think that also helps in knowing what the past looked like and what the future can look like, and being a willing participant in growing and, and making that future better for Oakdale. That's why I'm here, and, and to make sure that we're physically, phys fiscally, excuse me, fiscally responsible as we do it, as we go forward and as transparent and honest as a government body as we can be. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Mr. Morcom. Yep, absolutely. And I touched on this a little bit when I had my introduction, but um, passion is shown through what you do more than just words, right? And I've been a foster parent, I've been a civic leader, I've been engaged in many ways in Oakdale. So I'll touch on my business experience. So despite uh, my previous 15 years in sales and sales management and business, I'm currently a business consultant for Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota, which is a 220, soon to be million dollar organization. So taking that business consulting lens, um, there's so much changing in Oakdale right now. There's development, there's new houses, and how we plan for the future is gonna set the tone for these communities that we care about quite a bit. That's my background that I think I can provide some extra expertise to, to really inform our city staff to make sure that we're moving in the right direction. Um, furthermore, my three kids uh, last year, one was in Tartan, one was at Skyview, one was at Eagle Point. My wife's a teacher at Castle Elementary. I can't imagine anyone more connected to the school district than our family. And the school is so important to what we do here. So not only being connected to the individuals so that we can make sure to hear their voice and take their feedback into consideration, but use all of that information and funnel it through my experience as a business consultant to make sure, like Susie said, we're fiscally responsible and that we're making smart choices going forward is why I feel I'm qualified for this position. Thank you. Thank you all for the answers. Mr. Ebert. Sure. Starting, Susan, with you, what would be your two or three priorities if elected, or in your case, re-elected, to the Oakdale City Council? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, my first priority is always gonna be public safety. That's making sure that our department is fully funded, making sure they have the new and 
best equipment possible to do their job safely and efficiently. Um, and also to make sure that they're healthy. You know, they have new, uh, we have a new wellness program for our police officers and I believe that they have one of the hardest jobs you could ever have and for them to be supported and have options to talk to people when they need help is critically important as well. Um, another one of my priorities, of course, is to be physical, fiscally responsible and to make sure that we have a balanced budget and we're doing the best for our taxpayers. And the way I approach, the way I approach making decisions, especially fiscally, is because I live here and I am also just a middle class resident, right? Just like everyone else that lives here, most people that live here. So when I make a decision, I make a decision based on knowing that that decision affects me as well as thousands of other people in the city. And so I sometimes lay awake at night making sure I'm making the right decision, stomach aches, butterflies, the whole thing. But it's because I care that much and I wanna do the absolute best I can fiscally for the city, but to keep us moving forward as well. We don't wanna sit in the past. So those are my priorities. And also, one more thing, thick schools and the safety of the kids in the schools. We've been working on partnering with the schools and I think we can do better to provide more resources um, to make sure that our kids are safe and always safe when they go to school every day so they are not in fear. Wonderful, thanks Susan. Andy, uh, same question. What would be your two or three priorities if elected to the Oakdale City Council? Sure, well, public safety is probably gonna be all three of ours I would imagine. It's very important and seeing our city grow and seeing the crime increase as a result, there's concern out there and it's legitimate, whether it be catalytic converters or I spoke with Chief Newton and the number of mental health calls in the city has gone up fourfold in recent years. There's real problems that need to be addressed and it takes a lot of engagement to find out how we can do it. Um, I actually went so far as a resident to share some resources with the city on how they can get grant funding and work with a mental health professional alongside our police department. Not only does that provide the specifically tailored type of support that people are calling for in our city, it also frees up our officers to work on more violent crime, more organized crime, prevent sex trafficking, and some of these problems that uh, standard residents may not understand are happening, but are an issue that need to be addressed. So public safety, number one, Beyond that, uh, budgeting and long-term planning. Uh, I know Oakdale, as we grow, has more of a responsibility to look at the future of what we want to do this, for the city and plan out 5, 10, 15, 20 years so that we're not overtaxing our residents with short-term projects, with um, lack of planning that requires uh, capital funds or, or short-term funds to fix the gap. That all falls on the people who live here. So I wanna make sure that there's plans for every department within the city that stretch out far into the future so we can anticipate problems and be ready for them. Uh, the last one is engagement. The more people that give us feedback, the more we can exercise the will of the people who live here. And that can be through social media, that can be through marketing, um, but I wanna make sure that we're engaged with the people who are in Oakdale. Wonderful, thank you. Colleen, you want me to repeat the question? No, no, okay. you're, you're right. good, thank you. Um, of course, I have to reiterate the public safety. As Andy said, it's, it's on the top of all our lists. We need public safety. We need the police department to uh, have the tools to do their job. We need to support them. Um, and, and as Susie said, uh, to be continue to be physically fiscally sound in making our judgments. Uh, these last four years, we've done a good job with uh, staff uh, and we got our credit rating improved. We went from um, AA2 to an AA1, which means that we, when we go to bond things, we get a better interest rate, which makes it better for everyone in the community because it takes less money to pay something back.
So anyway, I'm pretty proud of uh, what the whole team did to do that, you know. Um, then also getting the new public works and the police expansion completed would be a priority. It is much needed. Um, if people saw the videos or they went on the tours, they would really see what, what's really going on. Uh, it's not a want, it, it's a need. And then, of course, uh, the Willowbrook, uh, three Willowbrook parks that we need to create and, and develop over the next four years. So we have a lot on our plate. We have, uh, there is exciting times. So I look forward to that. Wonderful. Thank you, Colleen. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, third question of the night. We're going to start with Andy. Mr. Moore, come down on the end. And that is uh, rent control has come to the Twin Cities, and cities are struggling. Uh, to implement policies, and they're all over the place at the moment. What is your position on rent control, number one? And number two, would you support expansion of rent control ordinances, specifically here in Oakdale or throughout the East Metro? Well, it's a good question. I know that it's been headline news, uh, capping rents, rent control. Um, I think that we can learn from the cities adjacent to us and acting too quick on these policies without understanding the implications to residents to businesses, to landlords, can have serious problems. So in all honesty, in order to really answer that question, I would need to know a lot more about what we're doing in Oakdale, and I would need to know how we can uh, use other successful models to find a way to, uh, to work through what's best for, for the city. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Colleen, now it's to you. Yeah. Um, I agree with Andy that I don't think rent control is the answer as we are finding out the other cities are really struggling with that and there's all these roundabout things that they're getting around to get around to raising the rent so i'm not sure again we would need much more information there are other ways we can attract um, houses here uh, i mean uh, affordable housing uh, by offering different incentives so I think we should look at those different options versus the rent control. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Susan, to you. It's an easy question for me to answer. That's, huh. I would never support rent control. Um, I don't think that that's appropriate. Uh, I understand that there are needs for people who um, can't afford market rate housing. And as Colleen was saying, there are other opportunities, other ways we can work to get that and accomplish that for our residents, but I would never support rent control and, and I believe that would hurt property owners. And I'm not sure why a property owner would build in a city that would control or try to control their rental power. Thank you, thank you all. All right, next question, and we've uh, focused a bit on this already relative to public safety, which as we know has been a big talking point during this election cycle. The question specifically is what will you do to support better public safety outcomes in the city of Oakdale? And second part of that question, are there initiatives on this front that you would like to see the city of Oakdale adopt? And Colleen, I think we're back to you. That's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> there's, um, there's different options to look at, and we need to look at all of them before we just go do it. But uh, we need to support the, uh, the public and make sure they are safe and, and like I said, give the tools to, of, to the police department. But then also the addition of getting some, maybe some, social workers to help with um, de-escalating some stuff, but not, not defunding or getting rid of the, the police like Minneapolis said, you know, or St. Paul. We, we need our police. Our, our police department does a wonderful job in Oakdale, and we need to continue all the, all the great work that they're doing, especially with the community officer on site at Tartan. And, and uh, we actually need more than one person at that, so to the other schools, because one person cannot manage to be at all of them. Great, thank, thank you. you. 
Susan, yeah, uh, initiative, oh, I'll, I'll re uh, restate the question. Thank you. What will you do to support better public safety outcomes in the city of Oakdale? And are there initiatives on this front that you would like to see the city of Oakdale adopt? I think our, our um, police officers do an excellent job in every way. Um, we have already supported initiatives with, their, with the new um, tasers where we've gotten the different, they're bright colored yellow versus the black, so there, there's no confusion. Um, and of course, 100% support the expansion of the police department. We, we need to get that expanded, number one, because our vehicle, police vehicles, sit outside all day long in the elements, which leads to a quicker turnaround when we need to buy new vehicles. It's, um, it's also safety, you wanna keep your vehicles you know, inside and locked away. Um, so I 100% support the half a percent sales tax in order to get that expansion done for them. It's also so that we can have more equity in the police department. Right now, we have a shortage of locker room space for women, for an example. We need to expand so that we can hire more women and make sure that we have a more equity-focused police department. Um, also, we are just starting with the body cam initiative, which is 100% supported by the police department. Um, and so looking forward to that as well. Wonderful, thank you. Andy? Yep. Uh, again, uh, what will you do to support better public safety outcomes in the city? And are there initiatives on this front that you would like to see the city adopt? Absolutely, and I echo what Colleen and Susie said. Our force that we have now are excellent but there's not enough of them and we can't just hire more bodies to try to solve the issue. It takes creative problem solving, it takes good thinking. One of the uh, unique aspects about Oakdale is we are crisscrossed with major intersections and highways all over town. And the police will tell you that much of the issues that we see aren't from local residents. It's from outside actors, it's from people coming in. So I'm a big believer from a business standpoint of looking to joint powers agreements looking to other agencies that have an influence in the city that aren't necessarily supporting what we're trying to do from a police aspect. If we could work with, uh, I know there are some joint powers agreements, but if we could work in addition with the state or some of the other uh, state patrol agencies so that we can get better support at our uh, buildings off our intersections, like Hy-Vee, for example, has been a hot spot of crime, and they've had to hire as a business in town their own staff to protect, that's a serious problem if we're trying to, to grow and support our businesses. Um, so more coordinated efforts on that front would be helpful. Also, the schools are a problem. Uh, having very involved kids in these school districts, I know that myself and a number of residents here in town have considered moving their kids out of the district, something we don't wanna do, but the number of fights and instances that people are called into these school buildings for is really becoming a problem. And we do have a community resource officer at Tartan, which is great, but they're completely overloaded and can't really serve the needs. So I would wanna work really closely with the school district and with the police department to find out how we can creatively build a bridge between those two. Great, thank you. All right, now this one goes to Ms. Olson, Susan in the center. Uh, and we've talked about this, uh, in fact, as the last question that you hit on the topic of public safety uh, numerous times before the question got asked. This question's about the local option sales tax and the question's very simple. A, do you support it? B, do you not support it? And talk about its benefits or its uh, weaknesses. Ms. Olson. So yes, obviously, you know, I 100% I support it. Um, and for me, I was kind of on, on, the, on the edge with it at first. What really turned it around for me is because we did the, the um, sales tax, the Minnesota, or excuse me, the University of Minnesota <laughs> did a review of where our sales tax dollars were coming from. And it was determined that over 50% is coming from people outside of our community. And that was the turning point for me. It, it's a matter of, do we spend, do we get 50% of, of the money for our new buildings from 
other people that come to our community to use our services, um, you know, come to our retail stores? Or do we end up having to bond for it and levy for it and, and make it 100% a burden on the residents of Oakdale? So that was a turning point for me, is that 50% was huge in my eyes. It makes a big difference. Also, and if you look at it realistically, it's 50 cents for every $100 you spend. That's it. I know it seems like we're, we're being nickel and dime to death. I get that. But in this case, we have to support, and it's much needed, not, not a want, as Colleen said. It's much needed. The, the public, um, public's work building is old. It's not healthy. It needs to move to a new location. And again, again, with the police, we need a bigger location. We need a place to store our vehicles and all the other reasons that I laid out before. So yes, I'm 100% behind the sales tax option. Awesome. Susan, thank you. Andy? I can repeat the question. No, I think no. you got the just. I think we're good. No, and, and in the same way, I do support this uh, local option sales tax. And from a business standpoint, like Susie said, it's important to realize that the vision of Oakdale that we all want, right? We want a safe place where people can grow, where people can expand a business, or they can achieve their own personal aims. All takes safety. It takes good public works, good infrastructure, and that can't happen into the future as we grow with the, the facilities we have. So we have to look at creative ways to financing that work and putting it on the taxpayers, I would not be in favor of. Uh, it would be a difficult way to push forward unless we had really good financing for the long term. I mean, if, if it's needed, it's needed, but that vision is important to everybody here so I would say the uh, 50 cents on the $100 is a small price to pay. And hearing from the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce, I saw recently the area businesses had voted in favor. Again, that was a worry that I had. It was going to put a burden on our businesses. But if the businesses see the value of sharing that cost with outside people and also of having a safer place to do business, then I absolutely am in support of it. Awesome, thank you. And before I get to Colleen, to, to uh, Mr. Morcom's point, that is correct. The Oakdale Area Chamber did uh, come out publicly and say we did support the, uh, the initiative on the ballot uh, for all the reasons you've mentioned, that it will actually strengthen our business community and help uh, the infrastructure here. So um, that was accurate. Uh, Colleen, I don't know, guessing yeah, I don't need to repeat thunder, the question. You took my thunder <laughs> away, but yeah. Um, but I agree wholeheartedly. I I. I'm for that sales tax. Um, it is only 50 cents um, for every $100, and it can be shared amongst lots of people, um, including many outside uh, people that come to Oakdale for restaurants, for eating, uh, for entertainment, like Marcus Theaters, anything like that. That will all help um, support our, our public works and police expansion. That is much needed. So um, I, I just have a hard time understanding why people would not be for it. It's so such a great deal for us and for everyone. And uh, it will be pretty painless, and we would get wonderful stuff out of it. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you. Just again, a reminder, the next <clears throat> question we had is sent in from uh, via text. So remember the uh, phone number on the bottom of your screen, 941-500-3275. For those of you present here in person and those of you in the viewing audience, please feel free to send a text. Uh, these questions are valuable and very helpful. So next question, and I'll start with you, Andy, is with the large amount of population growth that the city is experiencing, what can the council do to keep the Oakdale culture strong when lots of new residents are coming. I guess specifically we know Willowbrook, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,400 new um, residents coming. So how do we keep that Oakdale culture present? Right, that's a wonderful question and that's important. So 1,400 homes, five or 6,000 individuals. In fact, my wife's school she teaches at, Castle Elementary, was expanded just to accommodate those people coming to town. 
So a big part of that, in that Willowbrook community anyways, is the fact that the city was able to negotiate green space, parks, to be able uh, to be included in that development. I know that they're on the north end of town, and even though we've been bisected by highways and many roads, um, a focus on our community activities, whether it's Touch a Truck or the Summerfest Parade, all of these things bring people together, and there's a huge appetite for that type of community. It's why people live here instead of in uh, extremely rural areas or maybe instead of living downtown because it's hard to get in community when you don't have the space to do it. So uh, I also want to focus on, too, I know I was looking at the census information for the city, and our demographics are changing. So over the years, we've got more Asian Americans, more African Americans, and it's an important part of who we are. So not just including the people that Oakdale has always historically been, but including the new families that come in, however they look, so that they can feel like they're a part of it. So initiatives not just for the existing Oakdale, but looking to the people coming to town and using that to try to find new ways uh, to engage them in our parks and in our community. Great, thank you, Andy. Uh, Colleen, how do we keep that? How do we keep that Oakdale culture and passion yes. amidst growth that we have right. not seen in years and years? Well, I, I, when I talk to people out uh, out there, they keep saying that Oakdale is large, but yet they st we still have this home town feel and everyone loves that about Oakdale and this is why they stay in Oakdale. So one of the things we could do as the, the town expands and keeps growing is maybe have these pop-up uh, community meetings in their area. Go to them and try to engage them that way uh, to make them feel a part of it. So, because some of the newer people might not be aware of all the great things that we offer. and. Uh, so sometimes you can't just rely on Facebook and other things. There, nothing replaces going out and talking to the people in person. So if we had some meetings uh, that way, I think that would really help and get them involved and, and feel a part of us. Okay? Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Susan, the culture, how do we maintain it? It's, it's funny because I think the Oakdale culture means something to different people and different generations. And so it's kind of a big question with a lot of big answers. But I would say that I, I think throughout the generations, one of the things about Oakdale is that hometown feel. And also it's the nature around us. We have so many great parks, um, the trees, um, all the new development, the, the parks. And I think everyone can feel like they can engage when we have all of those amenities available for everyone. But as far as the culture goes, like I said, it means something different to, to everyone. And community, community engagement is definitely something that we need to work on so that we reach out to all those different groups to find out what they, what they need, want, what they feel like the culture is, because it could be different than somebody like me who, you know, Quiet. I stay at home, maybe use the walking trails at the Discovery Center, but it, it's different to somebody who uses the parks and brings their kids out there on a daily basis. So I think we need more community engagement to ask that question, what does the culture mean to you? Great, thank you so much. All right, another question from our, uh, our, our live audience, uh, whether it's by uh, uh, viewing audience or the ones in front of us. Again, the text number I know is on the screen. Uh, so please use it. Uh, this one, uh, and this one starts with clean. Ms. Swedberg, for you on this first one is, what do you see as the city's greatest challenge over the next five years? Um, getting the public works and the police expansion um, completed, mm -hmm. I would say that. Um, I would also, our challenge is to not keep adding staff with, with all the growth we're experiencing, not that we don't want them, but um, there are different ways we can accomplish it. Like we've been upgrading our software for a lot of the areas so they can do their work more efficiently. We do a lot of manual inputting right now, and so we've been getting different software that can help them do their job. So those kind of things. So that is a challenge. Of course, we're gonna have to add 
some people, because obviously, like for Willowbrook, we're, we have to have more public uh, works people to clean the streets and, and, and do the parks up there. So, but anyway, um, so those are some challenges I see going forward and to remain fiscally sound that we don't overspend. I don't wanna do that. Great, thank, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Olson, Susan, up to you. So I'm a firm believer where there is a challenge, there's also an opportunity. And we faced in the last four years a heck of a lot of challenges. We faced COVID, we faced city administrators, um, three of them. We have a great one now, which I'm very happy for. Um, we've lost a lot of long-term employees through retirement, and we've gained a lot of great employees because of that. So again, where there's opportunity and there's challenge, and they go hand in hand. Um, I would say challenges right now is, is maybe, maybe staffing a little bit. We're just a little bit understaffed and we need to, to work on that and everybody's going through that, every business. It's a hard time hiring people right now. And so maybe that's one of our challenges and of course always keeping, or always being fiscally responsible with all this new growth. It's, it's, a, it's a balancing act. And, and we take it all very, all of us take it very seriously. So that's, I think, is where our challenge is right now with all the new growth, making sure that we keep our budget in line and we're responsible with the dollars we spend. Thank you. Mr. Narcom, Andy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I, we've touched on it before. Um, crime is an issue and making sure we've got a public safety team in place that can address those concerns within our schools, within our businesses, is really, really important. Um, but we've touched on that quite a bit. So another issue I see is Oakdale is developed to the point where there's not a whole lot of space left for new development. So what does that mean for the future for residents? It means that turning an eye towards a more specific way to plan ahead so we can redevelop or give businesses an opportunity to redevelop what they've done to reinvent themselves in the new Oakdale as we've uh, reached our housing uh, capacity outside of uh, maybe multifamily that would go up. I know Lake Elmo and Stillwater, Woodbury are all developing around us. So the entire suburb is growing and pushing out faster ways. Uh, something that's important to me is what the city is working on now, which is a bike and ped plan so that people who live here can get around easier, they can do business easier, and that they feel like it's still a community, it's still connected. So I actually worked with Parks and Trails organization and got examples from the Met Council, from the city of Maplewood and other surrounding cities and shared that with the city staff as a part of my campaign so that they can see what's successful and what works so that going forward as we get to the next five, 10 years, we still remain connected and we still have that feel of a community. Thank you, thank you all. Great, all right. uh, next question and Susan, we'll start with you. How do you or will you balance promoting your passions for the city with other council members who maybe don't quite share that passion or maybe disagree with your passions and ideas? So it's happened many times. Many times I, I firmly stand on what I believe and my principles, um, but I am willing to listen to everyone's point of view and have had my mind changed more than once happy to do so. Um, I'm very passionate about what I believe in and I will strongly fight for it. You can ask anyone on the council. I'm not afraid to voice my opinion, how I believe things should be. And also, I do accept when I don't win that argument. There's lots of times where I'm passionate about something and it's not voted for, it's not a consensus. I walk away, move on. It's perfectly fine. I don't take it personal, but but I am very vocal about how I feel about things. Wonderful, thank you. Andy, how how do you, how, how would you like to balance that, that that passion that you have with other council members who don't quite see eye to eye? Right. Well, like Susie said, you got to hold strong to your values. But ideally, a council is made up of different voices that represent different parts of the city and different people. 
So if there isn't some kind of conflict or push and pull, I don't think we've got a very engaged council. So it's good to hear that that's actively happening, but I think it's important to listen to everyone's point of view. There's so much changing, there's so much going on. You have to listen and you have to make your case. When it comes to city council, a lot of the people I've been talking with that are running, uh, since I've started running for office, have no idea what the time commitment is to do this. And you know it's significant, right? It's not just showing up to meetings. You've got to do your homework in advance. You need to make a case for what you believe in, and that's important. So I am very much about having the pre preparation done in advance so I can best represent the people of the city and my interests. But again, if they don't come my way, that's okay because I know the other people sitting across the table have done their homework, and they're representing people here as well. And sometimes you have to live to fight another day. Wonderful. Colleen, good? Yeah, any, yeah. I need to repeat the question? No, no, All right. good. Thank you. Um, well, uh, as Susie said, we've had challenges uh, on, on the city council. But it's good to have differences of opinions and views. Uh, we come from different backgrounds. And we also represent different age groups. So it, and it's good to have that diversity. It challenges us all to look at things a little differently. Uh, what, what we need to do is learn to compromise uh, in coming to terms uh, with what we go forward with. Because basically, we, we all seem to be agree with the end result, the, goal, the end goal, but how we get there sometimes is what the challenge is for a lot of us in the meeting. Eventually, we work it out. So, Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Great. Mark? All right. Another question from our audience. And before I do, I want to point out that um, uh, the Oakdale Area Chamber is here to serve not just the businesses, but the residents of the city of Oakdale, uh, about 150 members strong. Uh, the website for the Oakdale Chamber is oakdaleareachamber.org. Feel free to visit it. And I'll also tell you the on-screen graphics tonight are new. It's the first unveiling of those graphics. You'll go to the website and say, this doesn't look the same, but it will. Uh, so we're proud of that. Uh, it's been a longstanding, you know, 30 plus years that Oakdale Chamber has been. Uh, and I, I can tell you it's been a part of my life and Larry's life for many years. And I know several of you here. Um, so encourage everybody to join and participate. Uh, the question now from, um, uh, and I think we start with Andy, Mr. Nor Mr. Morcom on this one. And that is, uh, if you have a vision, and you have visions to do things uh, meaningfully as a city council member, what are the biggest barriers to your visions, to completing, is there, you know, what, what, what's the obstacles you think you'll face to getting done with what you feel is right? Sure, well, it's a good question. And one of my key visions for Oakdale is better engagement, better connectivity. So I think uh, by and large, many people who have lived in town for many years, um, they trust in a general sense that the city has got their best interest at heart. So once people are established and they feel good about what the city is doing, uh, it's easy to lose connection. It's easy to step back and not attend a city council meeting or show up to the Chamber of Commerce. So I think that if I've got a vision, one of the barriers is making sure that this is really something people have provided feedback on. Reaching out, Kevin Zobel here with the city has been really good about uh, being a social media advocate for what we do. And I know our marketing team, which is new and growing here in the city, is also working to make sure that the people understand what's going on, they understand why it's happening, and that they all get to provide a voice in doing it. So I think that engagement piece is critical. The rest is business. The rest is working with elected officials. And uh, that can all be handled uh, over time. Great. Colleen, again, the question about barriers. What, uh, what do you see are the biggest barriers to accomplishing your mission and vision? Um, what I see is um, people on social media not understanding all the facts and uh, the vision or understanding the vision. So we have to make sure we do a better job of educating them, um, getting the word out sooner or explain things more um, because... So, a lot of times they have incomplete facts or incomplete or incorrect information. And when I see that, I, I, uh, I let uh, the city staff know about those 
so they can hopefully go out there and correct some of those um, incorrect information because it's vital. They need to understand uh, what a vision is and why the vision is what we say. So um, it would be uh, the more we can get very clear and concise and statements out there, the better off we'd be. Awesome, thank you. Susan Solson. So I agree with both Colleen and Andy as far as communication and engagement with the community, um, but also there are barriers with ordinances, right? What's legal, what's not legal? How can we pay for it? Can we afford it? Is that what's best for the whole city? You know, it's all of those things that we have to take into account when we're trying to get something moved forward. So, but I think when you have a great team, which we do, both on the council and staff, that we work together to get those questions answered so we can move forward mostly. There are sometimes there's barriers you can't jump over. Great, thank you, thank you all. Okay, next question uh, is looking a little bit into the future and it asks, at the conclusion of your council term, how will residents know you were successful? And Colleen, we'll start with you. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, if we get the things done that we, I am saying right here now, and what I've done previously, the previous four years. So I think we've already accomplished a lot. And, and Susie and I came in at a very hard time with COVID. So our first two years, it was COVID and the um, George Floyd crisis that we affected Oakdale too. Um, so it was very challenging for us to do some stuff, but I thought the, um, the council, in the end, handled things the best they can with the information we had, because things were changing so fast at that time, and it was really hard. So I think with all that and the Willowbrook Parks and uh, all the new th development that's going on with the destinations that we're uh, now getting, so Oakdale becomes an area where people come and spend money and enjoy the wonderful things we have to offer is super. So I think that's, they will know when we, um, those policies that we have been revising, we've been working very hard on revising policies, either deleting them totally or uh, updating them to reflect what really should be happening. For example, uh, one is uh, the park, uh, the pet fees for license. We've eliminated that. You no longer have to get a license for cats or dogs or whatever. So uh, that's a small thing, but that's just one example. Okay. So. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Susan, how will we know? How will we as the residents know at the end of your term that it was successful? It is a loaded question. <laughs> um, on a personal level, I hope they would see that I fought for flexibility, freedom from government as much as possible, um, lowering fees as much as possible, making things more fair to the residents. I hope the small businesses would know how much I fought for them during COVID. Um, didn't work. We still had to do the masks and the all the other mitigation and closing businesses down. I fought hard to not do that. I understand why we had to, but I hope that that's what people would see, that my major goal when I started is to get government out of their lives so that they could go about their lives every day, businesses, residents, go about their lives and not have to think about, oh my God, what is the city council gonna do now? What kind of fine are we gonna have? What's the fee? You know, and, and how are we gonna prevent businesses from growing and expanding? And, and I hope that they'd see that I was flexible in, 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 in for an example, for like, for an example, for home, where we had a certain amount of parking 
requirements that they had to have, and we were all very flexible in reducing that requirement so they could move in there, those kinds of things. I hope that people would see that about me. Wonderful, thank you. Andy? Yeah. How will we know? Absolutely, and that's a big question, like you said. And uh, ultimately, the people decide, right? That's how it works, is you don't get to judge your own success. The people who live here get to assign that. Um, number one, did they feel engaged? Did they feel they had access to government? Did they have a say in what happened? Those are pretty important metrics for success. Uh, business growth. Did businesses grow and come to the city not in spite of our city government, but as a result of a streamlined process? Like Susie said, knock down the barriers, make any kind of ordinances simple and straightforward, still keep the peace, but make it easy for businesses to come and thrive here. And then for the residents, uh, one of the interesting statistics I found in the uh, census that was published is that City of Oakdale had 91% of its residents stay in town year over year. People don't move. They stayed in town because they believed it was worth staying and living the life here. So if people continue to live in Oakdale and stay here despite the many choices they may have otherwise, I would feel that's a success. Wonderful. Great, thank you. So how fast the time goes. Uh, thank you again very much, uh, again, for all of those who joined us um, remotely and online as well as here in person. We're now at the point where we've got uh, one minute. Andy, we'll start with you just for a, a one-minute uh, closing statement. Perfect. Well, thank you for having me here to the Chamber of Commerce. I've never run for public office. This is all very new to me, but um, it's encouraging when I talk to all the people in the city how much they want to see good done, how much they support people who have lived here a number of years, and in my case, how much they get excited about the fact that someone's got a master's degree in public administration, someone who's got a background in business to help make sure that as we grow, there's some strategic thinking coming from the council to support our city staff. So I'm very excited to be here and thank you for the chance to join this forum. Thank you, Andy. Susan, we're gonna come back right to you now in the middle. So I uh, started my service with the city Apprehensively, very apprehensively, because as I've said earlier, I'm, I'm an advocate of small government and, and keeping government out of our faces. So for me to join this body of government was very difficult for me. And so I approach it as, as I said earlier, keeping government out of the way for people to prosper, do their jobs, play with their kids, be at the parks, have a successful business, expand, and as Andy said, want to stay here. And so I hope that you can trust me for another four years, keeping that in mind always, and keeping the fiscal responsibility and transparency in mind as well. That's what I will be for you for the next four years. And uh, I look forward to it. Thank you. Colleen. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the St. Paul Chamber and the Oakdale the OACC for uh, for putting this forum together. Again, I would consider it a privilege to represent the residents of Oakdale as a city council member for another four years. I have the experience and know-how to help make a difference. Um, what's important, though, I want everyone to go out and vote, no matter who you vote for. But obviously, I want you to vote for me, but I... It's just so, I feel it's a, a privilege that we get to vote in this country, so I think everyone should exercise that. So thank you for your consideration, and uh, I look forward to another four years. Thank you. So I would like to just uh, real quickly thank each and every one of the candidates for Oakdale City Council for sharing their time this evening, as well as your input. I know it will be val very valuable for the citizens of the community in their vote. And then lastly, to echo some of the same comments, on behalf of the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce, thank you for joining us this evening. And please, please, please remember to vote Tuesday, November 8th. Thank you and good night. <laughs>